We're now at a site called Zotjit Cattle. Now this again is near Kakaxla. It was built on top of an extinct volcano around 700 BC. And it was inhabited by the Otomi and Nahu ethnic groups. Now there's four pyramid structures here. The Pyramid of the Flowers, the Spiral Building, the Serpent Building, and the Platform of the Volcanoes. It was abandoned around 200 AD, uh, following the eruption of the Popocatepetl volcano. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. Um, and it was once again inhabited when uh, Kakaxla joined it in a society around 600 to 900 AD. That's really interesting to me because it's got circular pyramids here, it's got other pyramids, it's got like trilithons, and it's got some very interesting carvings that I want you to come and have a look at now. So on the way in, just outside the, the museum that's closed, they've got a little open air museum. And they've got some amazing pieces here. Look at this. So they've got this kind of crouched figure. This really does look like something from Peru or even Gebekli Tepe. It's like a frog perhaps. And you can see the arms, and everything on the side of it there. This one here is like some kind of feline. It looks could even be a kind of weird jaguar. Um, I don't know what's going on with its face. It looks like it's got fangs and other things sticking out. This one's very badly worn, so I'm, it's unclear exactly what that is, but it's like some kind of crouched figure. And this one here is really interesting to me. Look at this. This just looks like a moai, like an Easter Island head. It's got like arms coming inwards. This is very similar to what you find at Teotihuacan, but also obviously on Easter Island. It's absolutely amazing. These appear to be, this one appears to be made out of basalt, a volcanic basalt from the volcano that this is built on. We have loads of other things here. I'll just quickly run around. I'll put photos in as well so you can get clearer images. This is some crouched figure holding his navel. Again, a tradition we find here and in Peru. Now this is like a scroll, but made out of basalt stone. Look at this, this is incredible. So was this what they would write on? And it's got sort of spiral where the kind of scroll rolls up. Is that some kind of bed for a baby or what is it? It's absolutely amazing. What on earth is this? Some really beautiful pieces of stonework here. You have this one here, it's not, it's not really facing the sun. I don't think you can kind of turn it around. No. But this is made of basalt. You can see that, the sort of volcanic rock. We have this one here, this looks like some kind of Kesselcoatl head, like we find at Teotihuacan. And then we have these two heads. These are like sort of mini Olmec heads. We actually find Olmec heads a bit like this, although this is more like what you find at Teotihuacan. And this one here has got like the frown, and this has got the classic cleft lip. You can see that clearly there. Now this is, classic Olmec. So these early cultures that were here, these so-called local tribes, may have been <clears throat> influenced or even dominated by the Olmecs. And this one stone here could be the proof of that. Absolutely amazing. Even though it's only small, it's got Olmec features. It's even got braids. It appears to be going down the back of the head. And this is something we find on some of the colossal Olmec heads, specifically at Santiago Tuxla, and some of the ones from San Lorenzo. So this is, this is really interesting. So technically we found another Olmec head, although a very small one. It's just probably almost just over life size, but you can see the features here. It's just that mouth gives it away that this may be Olmec. So already on the way in, we're seeing very interesting stone pieces. We saw that huge stone piece at Kakaxla. Now we're gonna go into the main site and actually look at some of the pyramid structures. One of them circular pyramid, which really interests me. I'm gonna be doing a wooden book on pyramids. So I'm very intrigued by all the different styles you get here in Mexico.
So we're just approaching the first pyramid at the site. This one is a circular pyramid and it looks like we can even go up here. This is pretty cool actually. So we're gonna take a little look at this. There's literally no one else here. And this is like we find at Quilquilco, we find some in Jalisco State that have this kind of circular structure. And this whole site was thought to be a religious site. It wasn't really inhabited. It was where all the different cultures from different areas would come together before their rituals and so forth. So here we are at the spiral pyramid and this is one of the structures here, one of the pyramids. Now we don't find many spiral pyramids or circular pyramids in Mexico. Obviously we have Coquilco, uh, which is just on the suburbs of Mexico City. We have some in Jalisco State. We have the curved pyramid really of Uxmal, um, but that's about it. There's only a few others that have this kind of curved nature. So to find one here is absolutely mind blowing. The pyramid here or the spiral building, which is, it was built during the first stage of Xochitl from 600 BC to 100 AD. And it's said to re be a representation of the Popocatepetl volcano. Uh, and it was used, and it was a kind of step pyramid, obviously. And it's being taken over by the Spanish, who were part of the reconstruction team. But we're, let's go up and take a look. It looks like we can go up here and uh, might be able to get a good view from up here. And I'll just keep filming so you can see the different levels. I'm going to get out of breath because we're also at altitude here. And over in the distance there, you can see the main pyramid of the site with the trilithon on top. Let's keep going, get to the top. What's interesting here as well is that Behind me is facing perfectly east. So from the circular pyramid to the main pyramid, the whole orientation of the site is east, west, north, south, just like we find at Cacaxla. Now this could be um, in relation to the volcano, which is perfectly west in that direction. It could be because Cacaxla is perfectly east and they may have been built as one major complex, probably for astronomical purposes. And you can see the great mountain over in the distance there. You can have an absolutely stunning view of the landscape here. It's been blocked off a bit by the trees, but this is the whole landscape. And just from these two pyramids, which you can see the circular nature of the top of this pyramid here and the one over there, you can actually see that this would have been a perfect astronomical observatory before these trees were placed here. There is one other kind of circular pyramid which may be related to the Olmecs, which I believe this site is as well. And that's a uh, Chalcadzingo, there's actually a circular-ish pyramid, the whole, well the sides of it are actually curved, but the whole pyramid itself is a kind of square, but with curved corners, whereas this one appears to be circular all the way around. It's got a beautiful tree on top as well. But anyway, let's go and take a look at the rest of the site. So this is the platform of the volcanoes. This is just next to and in front of, in between really, the circular pyramid and the pyramid of the flowers. It's built a bit later on, sort of after the main site. And this is where ceremonies probably took place. Here, here and the pyramid of the flowers, they found many offerings, sort of goddess kind of figurines, motifs, and fertility. And now we're gonna go up here. This is the main part of the site. So we're now heading up the main ramp to the top of the main pyramid of the flowers here. Multiple level pyramid, very big. So here we have the top part of the main pyramid of the flowers with a huge megalithic kind of bowl at the base there. And some kind of trilithon at the top. This is pretty impressive. It's similar in, in stature to the pyramid, pyramid of the moon at Teotihuacan. And here they know that ceremonies took place. One of these bowls, probably an offering bowl, is above ground like this, this one here, 
Whereas this one is completely sunken in the ground. Now it may have been above ground originally, but not anymore. I mean, look at this. This is like built by giants. This is absolutely huge. And you've got a great view of the spiral pyramid in the distance there. So here we have the great bowl with the sunken one behind it and the main stairway leading up to the top of the ceremonial area of the Pyramid of the Flowers. Then we have the sunken kind of sacred bowl here. And this, this is an unusual shape, this one. It's carved out of solid rock. It's probably like three feet deep and it would have been sitting above ground originally. But this is absolutely incredible. Look at this. How unusual. It's like, where you, you, as you walk up the pyramid for sacred purposes, where there were fertility rites going on, you'd wash yourself and go to the top, connect with the gods. Likewise, this may have been one for the, the men, perhaps. This may have been one for the women, perhaps. Absolutely incredible. So let's take a walk up the pyramid and look at that trilithon up there. That's absolutely mind blowing. On top of the main pyramid of the flowers, you can see the mountains in the distance. You can see the trilithon. You can see all the mountains forming this pretty neat horizon, actually. Then you have Kakaxla over there. You can see that with the great roof. Look at all the terracing as well. It's very much like ancient Peru. It's almost like Kakaxla was built on top of like a natural elongated hill may have been used and it's still used by the looks of it for agriculture and and look at the how it aligns precisely with the volcano look at that so this is like aligned north south east west facing east right now with the volcano in that direction and then if we look west we have a whole range of volcanoes over here what's interesting is that sunken in the ground here is another sacred mega stone bowl which was probably used as part of the rituals and the ceremonies here at the site going back to 600 BC which I think may be connected with the Olmecs then we have the Trilithon here which is amazing and there was more to this structure you can see the stones all over the ground here which so there could have been a larger structure here not just the Trilithon that we can see here Almost got a Tiwanaku feel this place. So here we have the Trilithon made of really nicely cut basalt, probably from the volcano this is actually on. So look in more detail, you can see little kind of carvings. We have further columns here, so I suggest all these pieces here made up some kind of sacred structure. Could have been a multiple trilithons, much like we find at Stonehenge. It's interesting that over there in the distance, that building <laughs> perfectly aligns with that mountain. And it's like a big obelisk. So we have one of the great platforms over there, which I believe is the platform or pyramid of the serpent, which is probably related to Quetzalcoatl. We have obviously the spiral pyramid much like Chalcatzingo or Coquilco or the Jalisco pyramids. We have the megalithic bowls down there. The Great Pyramid here, which I'm on top of, and the remarkable Trilithon, as well as over in that direction, Cacaxla, which we just visited. Just below the Trilithon here, we have other types of stone. This looks like it's some kind of rhyolite or something. It's like bluestone. 
similar to one of the quarries in the Preseli Mountains, whereas the rest of it is clearly basalt. There's many other chunks of basalt all the way around here. So it makes you question what was really going on. Was there a sacred temple on top? I really believe there probably was. Very well built, very Olmecoid. These kind of pillars and columns, are the kind of thing you find at La Venta, San Lorenzo. They've worked with basalt, different types of rock. And you can see it's all embedded in the ground here. It's a whole bunch of it. Absolutely amazing. Much more going on here than meets the eye. So it's almost like during ceremonies, you would climb up, wash yourself in the sacred kind of mega bowls. And then you would walk through this, like you're entering a liminal space. And when you reach the top here, you go into the sacred space. And again, there's another bowl there. This is no one else here. I'm the only person this entire megalithic pyramid complex here in the central part of Mexico. We're just climbing down the pyramid now, heading back out to these sort of sacred megalithic bowls. These are absolutely massive though, absolutely massive. This one might even have a carving on it actually. Is that part of a carving there? Maybe a serpent's head or something? We have the sunken one and then the raised one behind it with the circular pyramid in the background. I must admit, I'm very impressed with this site. This is much more impressive than I thought it would be. Major pyramids, megalithic evidence, <clears throat> even a small Olmec head. There's fertility, goddess kind of motifs here. And this whole area was ceremonial, the whole place. Now, that's interesting in itself. There's not many sites which could say that. And so this was a sacred area. It's probably like high energy because it's, on a, um, it's right on top of a volcano. And it makes sense that this is on a fault line as well. So there's probably earth lights and other strange phenomena has been recorded here. Wouldn't surprise me. And the energy emanating up from the earth would have been noted by the ancients. And it may have been a fertility site as well, where they would have actually kind of gathered that energy, manipulated and controlled it to enhance their fertility and also to affect their consciousness. Oh, there's a big bang in the background. And, you know, it's just well worth a visit if you're in this part of central Mexico.